Once upon a time, in a land far, far away, there lived two best friends. Their names were Kay and Gerda. During the cold winter nights, Kay and Gerda's biggest fun was the fairy tale time with Gerda's grandmother. Where does the snow and the cold come from? asked Gerda. From far away, her grandmother answered and started to tell her story. There was a kingdom covered with ice and snow. The Snow Queen lived alone in the ice castle, made purely by her own magic. The Snow Queen was very beautiful and pure as ice. But the Snow Queen was evil-hearted and a lot of miracles were hidden in the magical and cold ice castle. The icy mirror was one of them. It was through the icy mirror that the Snow Queen's evil eyes watched everything that happened in the world. Right at that moment, Gerda saw the Snow Queen watching them behind the window. Kay! Grandmother! Look! It is the Snow Queen watching us through the window! I'm sure it is just a cat frozen from the cold. Grandmother, can the Snow Queen really come here? <laughs> Let her try. I would throw her in the chimney so fast, she would melt and turn into the Water Queen. <laughs> Watching through the ice mirror, the Snow Queen heard what Kay said. So you will throw me into the chimney and turn me into the Water Queen? Huh. Ice sparkles! Fly with my powers! Find this boy! Make his eyes and heart mine! Let his sight! Be evil for everything around him! And let the love in his heart be gone forever! Ordered the Snow Queen to her ice sparkles. Suddenly, a snowstorm started to blow in front of Gerda's house. The ice sparkles were moving fast towards Gerda. Curious about what was going on, Kay opened the window. Gerda screamed right away. Kay, stop! But it was too late. Oh, my eye! Something stung my eye! Oh, my heart! What is going on? And at that moment, the Snow Queen's curse was carried out by the ice sparkles. His eyes and heart were struck, and Kay had transformed into another person. Gerda asked him what had happened, but Kay yelled at her. Nothing! I'm fine! Leave me alone! This was weird. Kay was never rude to Gerda like this. She just couldn't understand why all of a sudden he started to behave this way. Kay's rude behavior continued to the next morning. When Kay was taking his sleigh out of the garden, Gerda asked him where he was going. He snapped at her again. He jumped on his sleigh and moved away. Gerda ran after him but could not reach him. Suddenly, on her sleigh, the Snow Queen appeared from nowhere and Kay started to follow her. Gerda was stunned and couldn't do anything as they both disappeared from sight. The Snow Queen was taking him to her ice castle. Gerda spent days in front of her window, waiting for Kay to come back. Days and months passed and the winter was over. But still, there was no sign of Kay. Couldn't stand waiting anymore. Gerda made up her mind, taking only the mirror her grandmother gave her. She head out to start looking for her dearest friend, Kay. Brave Gerda passed many roads and asked everyone she met on her way if they had seen Kay. Finally, she reached the shore of a river. She looked around and there was no one to be seen that she could ask about Kay. She asked the river but could not get a reply. At that moment, a seagull came next to her. The river would definitely have an answer for you. But first, you have to give her a gift. 
Gerda took out her dearly beloved necklace and placed it on the water of the river. Suddenly, a miracle happened, and from nowhere, a small boat appeared right in front of her. Gerda thought that the river liked her gift and was returning the favour. As soon as she hopped on, the boat started to move on its own. At that moment, a crow started to fly over her head. It was as if he was trying to tell her something. So Gerda started to follow him. She followed the crow for a while until they reached the icy seas. Right in the middle of the ice, there was a pirate ship from some time ago where the crow flew and landed. Gerda followed him on her boat and made her way to the ship. So, is this how I get to the Queen's castle with this pirate ship? Pirates appeared on the deck and one of them, a pirate girl, approached Gerda. You go wherever we go. And that is... Nowhere! Right at that moment, the Snow Queen was trying to make Kay forget about everything in his past. She succeeded up to some point, but whatever she did, Gerda would not leave Kay's memory. Gerda! Oh, Gerda! Soon your heart will turn into ice and you will not remember a thing! Finding out about her friend Kay being held captive in Snow Queen's castle, the pirate girl told Gerda to better forget about him because there was no way to get him out of there. I won't forget. He's my best friend. I have to find him, replied Gerda. The pirate girl could not really understand Gerda's persistence. Actually, she wanted her to stay there and become her friend. But Gerda was determined to find Kay. I'll do whatever it takes to rescue him. Because she had no friends, the pirate girl really admired Gerda's attitude and decided to help her. The next day, at sunrise, the pirate girl brought Gerda a reindeer. This was the fastest reindeer in the whole Snow Kingdom and she was going to show Gerda the way. Promise me that you will get that icy witch. You will also save our ship. I promise I'll return your favour, answered Gerda. Riding the reindeer, Gerda was on her way. First she had to find out how she could defeat the Snow Queen. The reindeer was going to show her how. After a long journey, they had reached the North Pole. An old wise man welcomed them. So... You finally brought the mirror, huh? Gerda could not understand how the wise man knew about her mirror. But nevertheless, she knew she came to the right place. So she took out her mirror and showed it to the man. So I'm going to finish the Snow Queen with this? This is a magic mirror. It shows the truth. Nothing but the truth. Even if it is hidden. Deep inside. Because nothing was stronger than true love, the real strength in all of us was love. Gerda found out who the Snow Queen was, thanks to the wise man. If she could reveal the truth, she could beat her. Because actually, in the past, the Snow Queen was a good girl, full of love. Wherever she touched, Flowers blossomed and her smiling eyes shined brighter than the sun. She was a unique and happy girl named Lilla. But everyone thought she was a little witch and did not play with or even talk to her. Left all alone, Lilla wasn't a happy girl anymore. She started to hate everything and everyone around her. Until one day, she made a wish. Everyone mean to me shall turn to ice. And then she built a castle made out of snow and lived in it far away from anyone, all alone and without love or joy. 
Gerda arrived at the Snow Queen's castle and entered inside. She saw Kay in one of the corners, making an ice sculpture. You're here! I found you! Kay! It's me, Gerda! Don't you remember me? Kay looked at Gerda, but he did not recognize her. Ha! Ha! His heart, like everything else here, has turned into ice. Gerda did not pay any attention to what the Snow Queen was saying. Let him go! He belongs to me now. I will turn you into ice as well. No, you won't make it. Kay, I love you. Kay slowly started to remember. Gerda, yes, I remember now. Furious. The Snow Queen shook her wand as fast as light and out came the Curse of Ice. Right at that moment, Gerda took out her mirror and held it against the curse. Hitting the mirror, the curse disappeared. And the moment had come. The Snow Queen looked at Gerda's mirror, only to see that it wasn't her reflection she saw on the mirror. It was the face of a little girl. The face of Lilla. Suddenly, the Snow Queen returned to her little and loving self and became Lilla again. Thank you very much. Now I know who I really am. I'm free again. Goodbye. Kay and Gerda looked at each other and smiled. From now on, they would never part and they would grow together. Just like the roses they had planted in their front yards. Once upon a time, there lived a married couple. Although they really wanted to have a baby, well, for them, it just wasn't possible. One day, his wife went to the old witch and told her she wanted a baby. Don't be sad, my dear girl. Where there's a will, there's a way. Take this seed and plant it in a pot and wait and see. You'll be surprised. His wife was very happy. She thanked her with joy. In return for her amazing favor, she gave the witch some money. Later on, she went straight home and planted the seed in a pot. With great patience, she began to wait near the pot. Soon later, a big tulip-like flower began to blossom. Right that moment, she thought to herself, what a beautiful flower. With its leaves still unfolded, she reached over and kissed it. Short after, the leaves began to unfold. In the flower was a child sitting down. With great confusion, the lady picked up the tiny girl in her hand. What a tiny little child you are! Hmm, your name should be Thumbelina. The lady made Thumbelina's crib out of a walnut shell, her mattress from violet leaves, and her blanket from rose petals. Thumbelina managed to adapt to her new life with ease. At night time, she would sleep in her bed that was made just for her, and during the day, she would play on the table and sing songs. One night, while she was sleeping in her bed, an ugly frog appeared from the window. It saw the little girl sleeping in a walnut shell. Rabbit, oh my, what a tiny and beautiful girl you are. You'd make a great friend to my son. As fast as it could, the frog grabbed the walnut shell and went out the window. Right near the house was a swamp. The house in which the ugly frog and his son lived in was right here. The son of the ugly frog was just as ugly as his father. When he saw the tiny girl his father had bring him, he croaked at the top of his lungs. Grab it, grab it. Stop croaking, you're going to wake the girl up. If she wakes up, she will run away in fear, rabbit. The father and son decided to make the little girl a place where she could stay. Father Frog had a great idea. Let's place the little girl on one of the lilies over at the stream. 
being surrounded with all that water, it will be impossible for her to get away. Fat Frog took Thumbelina with her crib and placed it on one of the lilies. In the morning, with the sparkling light of the sun, Thumbelina woke up. When she noticed she wasn't at home and saw that she was surrounded in water, in fear she began to cry. <laughs> Where am I? Father and Sun Frog went over to get Thumbelina. Here's your dear friend. I'm preparing a great new home for you. It will be in the very deep waters of the swamp. Father and son took Thumbelina's crib, made from a walnut shell, and swam off leaving her right there on the leaf. At that very moment, some red fish were swimming along, and they overheard what the ugly frog was saying. They couldn't stand the idea of an ugly swamp frog upsetting such a beautiful girl such as Thumbelina. Don't no, you worry, little girl. We are going to save you. All together, they chewed on the stem of the lily where she was sitting on, and they broke it. All alone now, the leaf got caught in a rip current and managed to get away. Making way on the current in her green leaf left all the birds with great admiration. How beautiful and tiny she is! As she was on her way, she passed a rather big maybug. He grabbed her as fast as he could and landed on a tree. Finding herself on a tree, Thumbelina was very frightened. What type of a bug are you? And why did you bring me here? I'm a maybug and I have never seen a bug such as yourself before. So I wanted my friends to see you. Later on, all the other Maybugs sitting on the same tree came around to visit Thumbelina. Trying hard not to show it, all the Maybugs were jealous of her amazing beauty. <laughs> You're a funny creature. How rickety, doesn't even have wings. How ugly, you can barely look at her face. You're free to go wherever you want. We don't want such an ugly thing being near us. Thumbelina spent the whole summer all by herself. She overcame her hunger and thirst by drinking the water of the flowers. A long time passed and the weather began to cool. Because of her summer clothes, she got cold. A field appeared from afar. The field was covered in straw. After a long walk, Thumbelina made it to the field. Under the straw, she managed to find a field rat's home. With a chance on finding some food, Thumbelina knocked on his door and asked for some barley. Kind-hearted field rat took her in. She got in that instant and ate up all the food the rat had offered. The field rat really liked Thumbelina. If you tell me a story every day, I will allow you to stay with me to the end of winter. With great satisfaction, Thumbelina accepted her offer. Today my neighbour will come by. He is in better condition than me. If you go with him, you'll be very comfortable. But keep in mind, he has very bad eyesight. You will need to tell your best fairy tales and occupy him for. Ever. A little while later, with his velvet fur on his back, appeared a mole. Thumbelina wasn't very fond with the mole, but she didn't want to disappoint him, so she agreed to sing a song for him. Fly, fly, ladybug, wedding will be tomorrow. Mommy will buy you new shoes and clothes tomorrow. Even though he had poor eyesight, the mole realized he liked Thumbelina very much and decided to take her home. I managed to come all this way by digging a hole and making a tunnel. If you like, we can go the same way and I can show you my house. Thumbelina was hesitant to go. Seeing the rat agreeing, Thumbelina accepted his offer. 
they managed to make their way. During this time, they saw a swallow lying down on the ground with its wings on its side and its head and feet tucked under its feathers. This bird wasn't here when I was coming. It must have just fallen through the hole. Thumbelina thought about the birds in the forest and remembered them chirping above her. She couldn't handle the sight of them being in this state and was very sad. Without the field rat or the mole seeing, she turned to the swallow and gave it a kiss. This bird could be one of the birds that was chirping during summertime. If that's so, then I owe him a lot. Come on, Thumbelina, we are waiting for you. She couldn't sleep that night. She knitted a quilt with the straw, went to the corridor and covered the swallow. She wet the mint leaf she used as a blanket and placed it over its head. Please be better soon, sweet little bird. The following day, Thumbelina went over to see the swallow and saw that its eyes were open. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to thank you. You took such good care of me. Now I will recover in no time. Once I have totally recovered, I will be able to go next to my friends in warmer countries. It's very cold outside. You should rest in your warm bed and recover at once. After Thumbelina was done giving advice to the swallow, she brings some water with the help of a flower petal and helped her drink it. And later on, listen to how she broke her wing, smashing into the bushes. The wounded swallow wasn't as fast as her friends. She was tired and so she fell. At last, spring had sprung and the sun began to warm the land once again. The swallow knew that it was time to say goodbye to Thumbelina. Would you like to come to the forest with me? I would have liked to come with you, but my friend the field rat would be very sad. I can't leave her. In that case, farewell, Thumbelina. Maybe someday we will meet again. With teary eyes, Thumbelina watched the swallow fly away. With summer ahead, Thumbelina's worries began to arise. It is summer now. Now that the Val the Third Mole would like to marry you, we should get some beautiful clothes together. When winter is here, be ready to live with me underground in the soil, Thumbelina. Before Thumbelina began her life underground where it was cold and dark, she went outside for the last time to see the sun. Just as she was about to enter, right above her head, she heard a bird. When she turned her head up to have a look, she saw her most loved swallow. Thumbelina told the swallow that she was being forced to marry the mole and that she had to live underground where there was no sunlight. Winter is nearly here. We are preparing to go to warmer countries. Please come with us. You've saved my life. I would like to pay you back. This time, Thumbelina accepted the swallow's offer. And off they went. Thumbelina and the swallow flew away over the forests, seas, and the mountains covered in snow. Later, the two friends arrived at warmer countries. These places were amazing. The sun was brighter and the sky was shimmering. This is my home. Please pick the best flower for yourself. This is beautiful. The swallow placed Thumbelina in a beautiful flower. Amongst all this beauty, Thumbelina was very happy. Sitting in her flower and looking at it in detail, she was mesmerized. In the flower sat a tiny man as shiny as glass. This man was the fairy of this flower. Every flower had its own fairy. He was as tall as a finger. He had shiny wings on his shoulders and a golden crown on his head. It was the first time the handsome fairy had seen a beautiful girl the same size as he was. What's your name, beautiful girl? My name is Thumbelina. 
The fairy took his crown off his head and placed it on Thumbelina's head. If you marry me, you will be the queen amongst all these flowers. You will live a very happy life. After having lived such cruelty, being in such beautiful environment, Thumbelina was very happy to hear such a great proposal from the very handsome fairy. The fairy held Thumbelina's hand, and right at that moment, two wings appeared on Thumbelina's shoulders. Thumbelina was now the fairy queen. Together they lived a long and happy life.